Hello everyone, and boy oh boy have I got a bombshell for you guys. This has been a taking time bomb in the crypto community for a very long time, and the investigation is over. We finally have the results of how much is USD Tether actually backed by? Is it backed one to one by cash US dollars? Or what does that look like? What is it actually backed by? We have the answer now, and we're gonna get into it right now. So Tether finally releases a breakdown of its 42 billion US dollars of crypto reserves. So the US dollar Tether is basically got 42 billion US dollars. And we have this awesome, awesome pie chart that they gave us where we're gonna be able to see exactly what makes up this $42 billion of US dollar Tether. So as we know, in general, we expect Tether to be backed one to one by US dollars. So one US dollar Tether token means one US dollar sitting in a bank somewhere. But what you need to know is that no company in the world, when they say cash, actually means cash sitting on the bank, at least no relatively large company. And I would say $42 billion in assets is a very large company. So it means that they don't have the stuff just sitting on a vault. What they do is they put the cash into short term, very, very, very safe investments to get a small return on it. And that's basically the approach that US dollar Tether is using as well. So you're gonna see headlines that say like, oh, US dollar Tether only has 3.87% of cash. Everything else is fugazi, fugazi money and you're gonna freak out, but there's very little to worry about, okay? So let's go through this step by step. You're gonna feel much safer. I'm gonna be happier when I understand what all these terms mean, and we're gonna get to the bottom of, is US dollar tether safe, or is there no backing whatsoever? Are they going crazy? So we have here this big pie chart, the blue one, and the dark blue area is the biggest one at 75.85% and this is composed of cash and cash equivalents and other short-term deposits and commercial paper. We're going to come back to this because this is broken down further in the smaller pie chart here. So let's move on to the secured loans which make up 12.55% of all of the US dollar Tether Reserve. Well, these secured loans are going to be made up mostly by crypto loans. So you have platforms like BlockFi, which are giving you like 7 or 8% interest on your Bitcoin. And you're wondering, whoa, 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 how the heck do they manage to pay for that? Well, they're giving out relatively risky loans, which have like high risk, high reward. But what they're doing is that as collateral, they're taking cryptocurrency for that. So you say, hey, I need a US dollar Tether loan. And as collateral, here's my Ethereum. Well, cryptocurrencies have been going absolutely ballistic lately. So almost no one has defaulted on those loans. If anything, they were able to pay it using off their collateral. So as of right now, these loans are exceptionally safe. But if cryptocurrency were to go sideways for a while, at that point, we need to hope that those companies have very good risk management and that they're actually able to continue making more money than they lose from people who can't pay back. But that's basically how any kind of industry that gives out loans works. So as long as this is kind of done by a competent management team, there's actually absolutely nothing to worry about here with those secured loans. One risk might be if the cryptocurrency world just absolutely crashes like crazy. But even then, then you only have a problem with the people who can't pay back the loan because then the collateral is worth less than was loaned out. But that would be the only scenario where this could actually be a problem. So I think the secured loans, 12.55%, totally fine in my books. Let's just hope that the people who are actually giving out these loans are actually using correct risk management, but that's totally fine. Nothing to worry about there. The second one we have here is the corporate bonds, funds, and precious metals. Now this is where I have a bit of an issue. So corporate bonds can be totally fine. You have Basically, bonds are companies that give out loans and they say, hey, all right, if you give us $100 now, we're going to give you $100 in a year plus $2 extra. So that's how a bond works. And the safest one you can buy is basically the U.S. government treasury bills, right? Those are loans that the U.S. government is literally giving out and saying, hey, if you give us the government $100, we're going to give you $102 in one year. And we're gonna talk more about those specifically in a bit with the treasury bills, but just to give you an idea of what a bond is and how it works. So as long as they're going with very, very safe corporate bonds, which have a triple A rating, like
I don't know, a company like Apple is almost definitely going to be able to pay you back, right? So as long as they're going with very safe corporate bonds, there's actually nothing to worry about here. And if they diversify into a lot of different corporations, there's even less to worry about. So I think that's even safer than the secured loans, right? And the secured loans, I already think, is probably not an issue at all. So the corporate bonds are definitely not an issue. But what we have here are the funds and the precious metals. So what you have to know about precious metals is that they're very cyclical. They have a tendency to go up like 100%, then down 50%, then up 100%, then down 50%. So you add a lot of volatility with relatively little upside, right? The price of precious metals doesn't really move so insanely much over time. And it's actually just quite risky. It's basically just investing in commodities. So like if you have a good team that knows what they're doing, you might make money, but most people end up losing money in this type of investments. And the same goes for funds. So if they're investing into hedge funds, well, one year, a hedge fund manager might have a very good year where they have gains of like 70% or 50%, which is absolutely outstanding. But inevitably, these tend to have years where they do very poorly. And most funds underperform the general S&P 500 market. So this funds and and the precious metals are actually big, big problems that I have with here. I don't think US dollar tether has any business investing into these, and I would like to see them really get rid of that, to be perfectly honest. Now, this probably makes up about 5% of everything in total, and as long as the funds are actually relatively competent and the guys managing the commodity, the precious metals investments are also relatively competent. There's probably very little to worry about here. They probably won't lose too much money there. I don't see them losing like 50% of their money. It's probably not gonna happen. So anyway, worst case scenario, that's like 2.5% of all of the USD tethers, which are like high, high risk. So, so far, it's looking very good. And spoiler, this is actually the one that gives me the most cause of concern for everything else. So really, everything else is more or less fine. So let's move now on to other investments, including digital tokens, 1.64%. So you might be going, whoa, 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 US dollar tether is investing into cryptocurrency. Why? That's not what we want from them. We just want them to have dollars sitting in the bank. Well, there's many reasons why they would hold other cryptocurrencies as kind of the reserves and oftentimes what happens is they want to be part of a new up and coming really cool cryptocurrency project and they approach them and say hey guys we would like to work with you so we're going to give you some us dollar tethers and in exchange we would actually like to have a piece of your project so there's quite a few benefits from that one of them is marketing because the more coins that you can trade for us dollar tether the more kind of adoption us dollar tether is going to have so if you just see this as a marketing expense I think it's more than acceptable to spend 1.6% on marketing and increase the adoption. But this is better than marketing because whatever you spend in marketing, usually you just lose it unless you're really able to bring customers back, which is the whole idea of marketing. That's probably how they've acquired them by making strategic partnerships with specific cryptocurrency projects and kind of giving them US dollar tether and in exchange getting those tokens. And I think in that case, as long as we see this stay below 2%, we're probably gonna to be totally fine here. I think it's fine. I think it's a necessary part of their business model. We should expect to see this on their balance sheet in some form or another going forward in the future as well. Let's just hope it stays below 2%, then everything's gonna be fine. So now we're going to go into the smaller pie chart, which breaks down the 75.85% of cash and cash equivalents and other short-term deposits and commercial paper. Woo, so much fun. No, it's actually pretty interesting, guys. So stick with me to the end. And if you like this video so far, go ahead and smash that subscribe button for more info from me in the moment that I put them out. So let's go. Let's start with the easiest one, which is this 3.87% cash so that's literally just us dollars that they have sitting in a bank account in a vault somewhere and basically all of the headlines are focusing on this and saying oh my god there's only 3.87 percent of cash of us dollar tether everything else is fugazi fugazi money no guys as i explained before this is a very normal way to manage a big amount of cash piles at any big sized company they're not doing anything out of the ordinary here so that's what you need to know about this 3.87 
0.87% cash. Let's move on now into the treasury bills. So as I touched on them earlier, well, most governments run in what's called a deficit. That means that they spend more than they make from taxes. Well, you're wondering, okay, if you're not getting enough money from taxes, how are you actually able to spend more? Do you just kind of like print the money and spend it? Yes. But the way that printing works is that to meet this deficit that they have here, right? This is their tax revenue. This is how much they need to spend. They, for this remaining amount, they give out a bunch of loans in the form of treasury bills. So they say, hey guys, please give us $100. We're going to give you $102 in the future, but we need this in order to match our spending for the year. So that's why we have treasury bills given out every single year by the U.S. government. And that's the basis of a treasury bill. So these are generally seen as the absolute safest form of investment you could ever have. So that they are investing in treasury bills is absolutely totally normal. It's a great idea. I think that it's perfect and they should keep doing it. So that's treasury bills. Now we get into more difficult ones. So let's talk first about reverse repo notes and we're gonna go into paint to explain these three concepts for you. So reverse repo notes. So this was my favorite definition that I found on Google. Let me just read it to you guys. We're gonna go into paint and break this down. So in a repo, one party sells an asset to another party at a given price and commits to buy that back from them at a different price, so usually a higher price, in the future. So I sell you this asset, and in the future, we commit to buying it back, but you guys are going to give us a little bit extra for that convenience. All right, guys, so what I've drawn here is we have two banks. We have a US bank, and we have an Indian bank. So what happens here in a repo is the Indian bank says, hey, can you give us one billion US dollars? So the US bank goes, yeah, sure, that sounds like fun. We're going to give you one billion US dollars, but we want to buy back those billion US dollars at a cheaper price in like one or two months. Now, the reason why the Indian bank would want to do this is because for their Indian customers, they now have the possibility of converting their Indian rupees into US dollars and the bank can collect currency exchange fees from that and ideally the bank would actually make more than they have to give back to the USA bank. So that's kind of the whole reason why this whole repo industry works. It's so that banks can give currency to other banks and get kind of a return for doing that. So let's say the US bank says, sure, we're going to give you about one billion US dollars. And they say, but we want to buy that back in a month. And the Indian bank is like, okay, we're going to hold the 1 billion US dollars. We're going to collect our fees on this. Thank you very much. We can now continue our operating expenses, which is basically the incentive for them, because then what they give back to the original bank is going to be this 1 billion US dollars plus a percentage of the fees. So basically, if they weren't able to get this 1 billion US dollars, they would never be able to offer this type of option to their customers of converting, and they would miss out on collecting fees on that. So even though they have to give all the money back, plus a percentage of their fees back, it's still worth it to them to do this. So that's how the repo notes work. And now that you know that it's basically banks loaning to each other, once again, this is a perfectly acceptable practice. And we would like to see US dollar tether continue to invest in those and it's perfectly safe. It's fine. So that leaves two big things for us on the list. We have commercial paper and fiduciary deposits. Now, Let's start with fiduciary deposits and save the biggest one for the end. All right, guys, so now we're talking about fiduciary deposit. And this is not a difficult concept to understand, so stay with me. Let's say you're over here. Your name is Johnny, and you would like to earn a little bit of money on whatever you have sitting in the bank. So you say, hey, bank, I want you to make very, very, very low risk investments for me. So I'm going to give you, let's say 1000 US dollars. And I want to be sure that you're going to give me back the 1000 US dollars, plus hopefully a little bit of interest later. And the bank says, 
okay, sure, do you want actually to secure it? And then we're gonna give you back for sure the thousand dollars plus a little bit of interest, or would you like to take more risk? And we're probably gonna be able to give you more than just a few dollars in interest, but you might actually end up getting less at the end if we mess up and give you back bad investments. Well, Johnny can decide, yeah, I would rather make sure I get that back or I would rather take a bit more risk and hopefully get more back, but also get less back. Net net, basically what happens is that they go ahead and invest this for Johnny. And then at the end, they give back in like, let's say a couple of months or a year, they probably give Johnny back like 1,020 US dollars. And then Johnny is a happy little Johnny. So you can really make these as risky or as safe as you want them to. If you go to the bank and you say, hey, I want this to be super safe. I even want to secure and make sure that I get my thousand dollars back. They can do that as a fiduciary deposit. But you could also say, hey, I want to risk a little bit more. I want to get, you know, I might lose some, but most likely I'm actually going to earn a lot more back than if I went with the safe bet. And in that case, you know, Johnny could get, let's say, 1,100 US dollars, but he could also get back 900. So that's a bit more risky. And let's hope that Tether is actually only going for the safer option, which has this guaranteed amount that they're gonna get back. Now, this could be a little bit of a cause for concern, depending on the risk profile that US dollar Tether is kind of going for here. So let's go back to the chart. And I would say that maybe we have 5% here, which could be kind of considered, yeah, kind of a riskier thing. But you know, it, I could be wrong there. It could be that they're being very, very safe with what they invest in. I think we can consider maybe 5% here being a bit more risky as like kind of a safe estimate. So that leaves the last piece of the puzzle here, which is commercial paper. So once again, let me give you a definition straight from Google, and then we're going to break it down in paint. So commercial paper is a money market security sold by large corporations to obtain funds to meet short term obligations. For example, to make payroll, to pay for their car leases, to pay their rent. And it is backed only by an issuing note right? They only give you kind of an IOU, a promise to pay back whatever you lent them, plus a little bit of interest within a given time period, be it one month, three months, one week, one day, doesn't matter. That's how this commercial paper works. So let me show you an example. So let's say you're over here and you are US dollar Tether. And over here, you have a nice little company and let's call them company. <laughs> and these guys have obligations, right? They need to meet their payroll. They need to be able to pay for their car leases. They need to be able to pay their rent. And they might have some other short-term loans that need repaying too, you know? And there's many reasons why they might need to repay these things. Sometimes even just the accounting department has some delays and they just simply won't get the money on time that all these payments are due. So generally during regular business operations, they know, hey, you know, this money is going to come in. We might as well take out the loan and just avoid defaulting on any of these payments, like missing any payment dates. And that way, as soon as we get the money, we already know we can pay it back immediately. So this is basically why the companies would be issuing these types of notes. So they say, hey, we're going to give out this little piece of paper and say, let's say they need 1 million US dollars to pay off these obligations in the short term. And they're saying, does anyone want to loan us $1 million? We'll give you back $1 million plus a little bit extra in like a month's time or whatever. And then kind of everyone is looking at that and they're saying, hmm, and US dollar Tether says, yeah, sure, we're going to give you the 1 million US dollars and we'll take your promise to give us back money in the future. So ideally, at the end of the term, the US dollar Tether Corporation or whatever they are, uh, should be getting back like 1 million plus, I don't know, let, let's say they get back 50K on top of that for giving them this kind of commercial paper, right? This would then be called what the commercial paper is. It's just a promise to be paid back 
within a given amount of time. So this can, again, be as risky or as safe as you want to make it. As long as US dollar tether is diversifying and giving it to many companies, and those companies have a very high safety rating, ideally like a triple A rating, that means that they're almost for sure gonna pay it back. So once again here, this could be as risky or as safe as you wanna make it. So let's take a conservative estimate here and say, all right, this makes up a pretty big chunk. Let's say that 10% of this could be quite risky, right? So 10 out of 65 could be quite risky. And I think that's a pretty fair estimate to make because if we really wanted to know just how risky it was, we would need to, first of all, check who are the investment officers of Tether and feel free to go ahead and do this research. You might be able to find it. So you would want to check who are the investment officers of Tether, where have they worked for before, and what kind of track record do they have? Do they have a good track record? Do they have a bad track record? And that would kind of be the way that you could kind of assess what the risk profile of this commercial paper would be. But let's take an estimate here and say, okay, 10% risk here with the commercial paper, 5% risk here with the fiduciary deposits, and then we had, again, 5% risk here with the funds and precious metals. That gives us a total amount of US dollar tether reserve, which could be risky, which is about 20%. Let's say they get very unlucky and they lose half of that. Well, they still have 90% of what they would need to have in their reserve backing to have like for every one US dollar tether token, they have like 0.9 US dollars in reserve and all the other stuff is going to be paying them interest and money as well. So this 10% that they lost with these very risky investments, and that's really a worst case scenario, they'd be able to get that back in one or two years just by holding the other investments. So what should we take away from this analysis? Well, we should take a deep, deep breath of relief, right? Just a sigh of relief. <gasps> it's okay. Everything with US dollar tether is under control. As long as they don't make any too crazy moves, and even if they do, well, it's all going to be fine. If they are very good about their investment vehicles and keep a very low risk profile, they might actually be making quite a lot of money, which is safe and totally fine because this is how large corporations handle their cash. So as long as they keep their risk profile low, even this 20%, which I said was risky, that could also be pretty much zero risk. So I think that we should all be very happy that US dollar tether is actually being responsible with how they manage their money because that's a very good sign for all of us in the cryptocurrency community. There's $42 billion here in US dollar tether tokens across everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you feel safer now after this video and you want more people to feel that the cryptocurrency space is a safe space and they should maybe look into joining it and anybody who has doubts about US dollar tether should see this video, go ahead and smash up that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And guys, subscribe if you wanna see more content from me. Otherwise, and anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye-bye. See you in the next one. I also made a video on Dogecoin and Cardano today if you want to check those two out. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Magic disappearing.